So where we're standing now is the central tower of the castle. And this tower house is the oldest part of the castle complex. This castle was built in the 1420s, 600 years ago. And when Doe Castle was first built, it was just this white tower house that still stood. It was built by the O'Donnell family, and the O'Donnells were the rulers of Chirhunnel, this part of Donegal, throughout the centuries. But the O'Donnells didn't live in the castle. About 20 years after they built Doe Castle, they gifted it to the McSweeney family. Now, the McSweeney's had to work for the O'Donnells to earn this castle. They were what were known as Galloglass soldiers. And that word Galloglass comes from the Irish, Galogli, which means foreign young warriors. And the Galloglasses were mercenary soldiers. They came from the western coast of Scotland in the 12th and 13th centuries. And coming from Scotland, they arrived in the north coast of Ireland. And here they fought for the Gaelic Irish lords. Fighting their battles for them, they also acted as security and protection for them as well. So with that, it was most likely that this castle was then a payment of sorts from the O'Donnells to the McSweeney's for their years of service to the O'Donnell family. The McSweeney family lived in this castle for 150 years. And in that time period, there were 13 McSweeney chieftains at Doe Castle. We have only detailed historical documentation surrounding two of these figures. The first of these being Owen Og the second McSweeney, chieftain here for 26 years between 1570 and 1596. And he is a man kindly recorded in Irish history. The annals of the Four Masters describe him as a man of great wealth and generosity, as he sheltered many of the Spanish sailors shipwrecked off the Irish coast after the failed invasion of the Spanish Armada in 1588. So he brought the Spaniards to this castle for their safety. As well as that, another colourful character that lived in this castle was the last McSweeney chieftain, a man called Mwilwara and Vata Vui, or Miles of the Yellow Stick. And he was quite the controversial figure. As he, when he became chieftain here in 1596, Ireland was in the middle of the Nine Years' War between the Gaelic Irish lords and the English authorities. And he changed sides at least five times during that war. So he knew how to stay alive in dangerous times. In 1599, he sided with the English and received a knighthood from Queen Elizabeth I. And that's how he got his name, Miles of the Yellow Stick. As was part of the knighthood ceremony, he received a yellow staff from the Queen. But within two years, he threw away his yellow stick and joined forces with the Irish in Donegal town. There he met the great Irish leader, Red Hugh O'Donnell, and the rest of the Irish forces. And with Red Hugh in the Irish army, Miles of the Yellow Stick was the only Donegal chieftain to join Red Hugh on his epic march south from Donegal to Kinsale in County Cork to fight the English army at the infamous Battle of Kinsale. So we have visitors coming to our Doe Castle from all around Ireland and from across the world. One of the things they're most interested by is the legend of Aileen and Turla, or the Irish Romeo and Juliet, as many of our visitors like to call it. Aileen was the daughter of the last McSweeney chieftain, Mwilwara and Vata Vui and she was known as the fair maiden of the land. And she fell in love with a young man called Turla Og O'Boyle. And the O'Boyle family were the enemies of the McSweeney's. So when Aileen's father, Mwilwara, found out, he was not pleased. So he locked his daughter in the tower to prevent her from seeing Turla. But Turla persisted. He disguised himself as a fisherman 
and he rowed his boat up Sheephaven Bay behind us here in an attempt to see his love locked in the tower. But Mwilwara quickly recognised him, sent out his guards, captured him and put him into the dungeon of the castle. Where after a couple of days, Aileen was looking out of the window and she saw Turla's lifeless body being lifted out of the dungeon below. Mwilwara had Turla killed. And upon seeing this, Aileen jumped out of the window where she met her death. The two lovers were buried side by side and it is said that on moonlit nights, the ghostly figures of Aileen and Turla can still be seen rowing away from the castle in their boat together at last.